Hello and welcome to St Margaret Lodgeby Church here in the City of London. Uh, we're very pleased to welcome you to the latest in our series of Advent Reflections. Today we're really pleased to welcome Martine Oborn. The reading for the third week of Advent is taken from the Gospel of St John, chapter 1, verses 6 to 8 and then 19 to 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered them, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptising if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptise with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptising. Well, every Christmas we read uh, John's Gospel, we read the prologue, this wonderful passage uh, of the Incarnation which speaks of how God became flesh and dwelt among us. It's wonderful, it's inspiring. Uh, but every year it somewhat surprises me that we get these random verses in the middle about uh, John the Baptist. Why suddenly are we told that John the Baptist was uh, a witness who testified to the light uh, to Jesus so that all might believe. Why, why do we need this signpost? Why did Jesus need someone to point to him? Uh, wouldn't people have noticed him anyway, doing his marvellous healings, um, his, his incredible teaching, going around upsetting people and challenging people? Why do we need John the Baptist? Um, John the Baptist in Jesus' time was, of course, a huge figure. He had a great following, and many people thought that he was the Messiah, uh, and so much so that John is very uh, goes to great pains to make it clear he wasn't. He has John the Baptist say three times, no, no, I, I'm not the Messiah, I'm not Elijah, I'm not the one you've been waiting for. I, my role is simply to point to Jesus. Um, so why does Jesus need John the Baptist? It feels a bit like a kind of celebrity endorsement, like uh, politicians uh, like to point to celebrities to support them. I mean, even in the church, we love it when famous people um, start talking about their faith, people like um, Bear Grylls or Lewis Hamilton or Stormzy. I mean, when popular people say, uh, look at this, then we do tend to stop and take notice. So is John the Baptist um, some kind of celebrity endorsement for Jesus? The thing is, as I've reflected on this, I feel that John the Baptist is a signpost, but a signpost among many signposts that existed in Jesus' time. Um, if you think about it, uh, the Jewish leaders, they were pointing to the law. They were saying, just follow this law and then you'll be right with God. And Gentiles, they pointed to um, Caesar. They said, look, Caesar is divine. He's the son of God. Follow Caesar. Give your allegiance to Caesar. So John the Baptist was a signpost among many signposts. And he was a signpost who pointed to Jesus. Now, uh, in our world today, it's very similar. We live in a world where there are many signposts and not many of them point to Jesus. Many of them are pointing to other people or other things um, who are false saviors, who people hope will bring them um, 
wholeness and healing, uh, but they cannot deliver that. And um, so today, we need signposts like John the Baptist. Question is, who are those signposts in your life? Who are the people in your life who are pointing to Jesus, to the one person, the true saviour, the one person who can truly bring heal, healing and forgiveness and love and reconciliation? And who are the people who are pointing to false saviours? And the question is, whose signs are you going to follow? Are you going to say yes to the true saviour, to Jesus, to the one who can truly bring healing and forgiveness and love and call us home? Um, or are you going to put your faith in something else? When we say yes to the true saviour, when we say yes to Jesus, we don't only find healing, all those blessings, healing and forgiveness and reconciliation and a place of love for ourselves. But we also then become signposts for others, pointing in our turn to the one who can also bring them healing and forgiveness and wholeness and love. So this Christmas, uh, may you follow the signs, the signs that we see throughout the Christmas story in John the Baptist, in the angels, in the star, all these things pointing to Jesus. May, may you follow the signs that take you closer to Jesus. May you say yes to Jesus and may you become a signpost yourself. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for John the Baptist and we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for all the grace that he has brought to our lives. And Lord, we want to be signposts for others. So this Christmas, may we draw closer to you. May we follow in the right path and may we guide others towards you. In Jesus' name, amen.